this series, I will be showing you troubleshooting techniques for electrical problems in slot cars. Hello HRAs fans, this is Kevin Vito, Man50. Welcome to another video. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn how to make your HO slot cars faster, handle better, and do HO slot car scenery, you've come to the right channel. Go ahead and make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss a thing. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to check my track to show you where my track's at. Then I'll break the car down in little pieces to show you how to check the little stuff here and there to make sure the car is working correctly. Now right now, my track is at 18.01 volts. I'm running at 18 volts at my power system, but it jumps here and there, which is not going to be that big of a deal. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take and put the car on the track. The car is running. As you see, it's running fine. So what I'll do is I'll break the car down and show you odds and little things of the car. Okay, now this is a magnet traction. Now a AFX magnet traction, which originally was an Aurora car, originally, which had no magnets showing. This is a magnet because it's showing the magnets, okay? Now, on the uh, the Aurora original Aurora cars, the T-Jets, they're pretty much built the same way, a um, pancake style mo uh, uh, armature with a set of gears that runs the back tires with pickup shoes that go to motor brush springs and then motor brushes. Okay, now the non-magnet traction, all it is is the motor magnets uh, shorter and it doesn't sh show like this one does. This what this does, it holds it tighter to the track where you can actually race the car a little bit better. Okay, this is what this, the AFX magnet traction, Aurora Factory Experimentals, AFX, okay? So that's the car. So what we do is remove the top clip and expose the top pan. This is the top pan which holds the the armature, the idler gear, the rear gear that runs this gear here. There's a gear in its bottom here which runs this here which spins the whole thing. As you see that going forward the motor runs to the right. If you see the motor, the motor runs to the right, okay? So I'll break it down real quick. Now that's the car bear. And let's see here. As you see, one spring came out, the other spring is still in there. So we just remove the spring. Now you can do it with the uh, magnets in the car or out. I'll just put them back in so it be no big deal. Now, white usually is to the front unless your track is running a different direction. White is usually to the front. Always run the white at the bottom. Red towards the back. Okay. There you go. You pop in. Boom. Now, just to show you, this gear here is the top gear. I don't know if you can see that. See how this gear is the top part of the gear, which is this part here, which spins this gear here, a secondary gear. And that's the one, as you see, if, you, if it moves. See that? When a motor spins, it moves that gear, that gear combo. And what that gear combo does, it runs this gear here, which this gear spins forward, which moves the car forward. As the gears move, that's what makes the car move forward. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to test this here. So I'll put it back on the track. You know we ran before. Okay? We'll zero it back out again. And then you're going to have to, the left one runs the front, the right one runs the back. Okay? Usually the left is usually, there you go. Now that's with the pickup shoes in the, in the, on the metal rails. And I'm testing, as you see, I'm testing the uh, pickup, the brush uh, pockets, the metal part of the pocket, where you see it's actually, that's working here. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is there's juice getting through here, which goes down in this piece here, which goes in here to run the motor brush. There's a spring and the motor brush goes in there. Same with this one. You're going here, 
and what you're doing is there electricity going through here and coming here. This is usually the negative side, this is usually the positive side. Unless, you're, like I said, you're wired a little bit different than mine or backwards. Driver's side, positive. Passenger side, negative. Okay? And they riveted in. See how they got the rivets here holding everything together? Now, what there is, too, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a spring in here. That's what makes the pickup shoe move up and down the spring. I don't know if you can see it there. So what happens is this shoe comes back here with held, held in a spring and goes in this little pocket right here okay so right now this here is working fine and this one here is working fine okay so now you know how to test just the chassis itself to make sure it is working correctly this one the chassis is working correctly we're getting electricity so now what I want to do is we'll put the magnets back in they fell out when I turned the car over no big sweat it's easy to put them back in white to the front, red to the rear. Now, me personally, I found a toothpick. Putting it in that little hole will put the spring in with no problem. Toothpick, picking up the spring, no problem. There we go. Okay, I always put my finger over the two open holes here, so if I put the brushes or anything in there, they don't go flying out and land on the track. Now, on the motor brush, you'll see that it's got a dimple on it right here you see the dimple what that dimple does is that goes into this hole and it makes it so it does the, the uh, motor brush don't bounce around a lot okay so we'll put that back in there and then on the top part you'll see that the motor brush is flat see how it's flat okay so there we go we'll put these back in now what I'm testing, I'm testing the volts coming through from the ch from the track into the chassis, okay? So that's what I'm doing. And see now what happens is if you use a screwdriver or something metal, you'll end up picking up that you'll end up picking this up out of the chassis. Using a toothpick that doesn't happen. Okay, now you see where the motor brushes are in place. Then you put the car back on the track. Like I said, this is an easy way to test to see if the car is working. So we know the front is your positive, the back is your negative. Okay. Now, see, so you're going to get what I would call a little sporadic loss. See, 17.54, you know, 7, whatever. It's probably just bouncing around a little bit too, uh, also. But you see how it's now we know, at least we're getting juice to the motor brushes. Okay, and this is done on a volt. What you're doing is you're going to put it on your volt, your multimeter, put it on the volts, and then what you do is you zero it out to make sure it's working. That's zero. Okay, and then you're just going to put these on here, like I, like I showed you already. And what you're going to do is just test those. Once you test the motor brushes and you're getting the reading of what your track is or darn close to what your track is, because there's going to be a little bit loss from the brushes and everything coming up. The brushes you'll get a little bit of loss because you're going to get a little bit of them pulling the juice, you know, using the juice, okay? So there you go. Now, to test the motor, it's pretty simple. If the motor's busted, what happens is, let me show you something. This is the motor, okay? Now what it is, is there's windings coming from the front here, which attach from the front, attach and solder to here, from the front here, and then they wind it and then they attach this one to the back side. And then what they do is they solder it, and that's where a lot of times you get a lot of your mis misbalanced motor, okay? So what they do, now I don't know if it's exactly coming from the front here and then down over to here and back. I don't know exactly how it's exactly done. I've never wound a motor, so I can't be honest with you on that. Anyone that knows can give us a little bit better information. But that is your how your motor is. This is your armature. This is what they call a three lamb. It's got three, one, two, three, what they call lambs. This tri thing here is stacked three high. They stack one, two, three high, and then they wrap the uh, armature uh, arms up, and then they go ahead, and this plate goes on the bottom. So what happens is the electricity goes through this one, this one, and when it's spinning, 
then it goes to here, 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 and that's what keeps the motor spinning. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll set this down here, and what we'll do is we'll go to ohms. You're gonna hook your, your multimeter up to ohms. And to find out if the motor, the armature, is working, now you can do all this stuff is on most of every style of car. We just have to show you a little bit different. What you're doing is you'll touch each individual here. Now watch. This is a 15, whoop, this is a 15.4, 15.4, ohm motor. The higher the numerical number, the slower the car is going to run. The lower the numerical number, the faster the car is going to be. So you test these two, and then we'll bring it over to the next one. See, it's almost identical. You want all your, you want all your readings, the 15, 3, or 4, whatever, you want it to be as close as possible. The closer they are, the better the car will run. Actually be more even. So that's what you're doing. See, you'll test this one and this one. Okay, same thing. So that one's like a 15.2, 15.3. So we're pretty close on this. And just test them back and forth. And that's how you test them. Now, this motor's in good shape. Okay. If the if the if it's real high or it doesn't really, if it's real super high, then it's usually the motor's going bad. Okay. Okay, now, I put the car back together. You know, I put the springs, the brushes in, you saw that. I tested all that. We know the chassis with the spring and brushes all work. We knew the motor was in good shape too. I tested that individually. I didn't test it. I tested this one instead just to show you. This is a new one I bought a while back, probably about three or four years ago. But there you go, the car runs. That's why the car runs, because everything's working in unison. What you gotta do is you just gotta make sure of that. So you know how to test the everything up until here. You know how to test it with it on the track. You just test the test it at the, the front and the back with a, a multimeter. A light would even work, even if you could put a light on there. The only thing you can't do is you can't use a light on a, uh, the armature itself to test the armature. But even if you test this, you know the chassis and the brushes are working. That kind of eliminates that. So in other words, if it's not running, it's probably the armature. Okay? Okay, on that, uh, just showing you a few little techniques. I'll be showing you further techniques of how to check brushes, uh, the motor brushes, springs, odds and little things, and how to kind of work them a little bit, your motors, uh, the armatures, and just odds and little things. Most of all the techniques I'm going to show you is going to be pretty much across the board. You can use them on the larger 132nd scales, 124th, uh, T-Jets, AFX, uh, magnet tractions, non magnet tractions, 440X2s, most all your Tycos, some of them, these techniques will work kind of broad to work on most all your slot cars. So I hope these techniques will really help you to figure out problems if you have issues with your slot car, okay? And everybody have a good day and keep your pin in the slot.